On the breakfast, the Nigerian Medical Association has urged the federal government to ensure the payment of newly approved hazard allowance to its members. Is another strike possibly brewing? We also look at the African Democratic Congress, which has made the headlines again this, this time for the wrong reasons. Uh, the National Working Committee of the party has suspended 17 state chairmen of the party. Uh, can the ADC get its house in order in good time for the 2023 presidential election? We'll have in-depth analysis of some of today's papers uh, going through the front pages of the National Dailies, as always. We call it Off the Press. We're glad to be back with you this morning right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a brand new morning. Uh, Messi is looking so bright wow. and uh, uh, really punchy today. <laughs> Thank Messi, you. Your red, bright red suit. <laughs> All right, we're back. Uh, interesting conversations. Yes, it was quite interesting. Like we say, 24 hours is a long time, you know, in this country as far as stories are concerned. There's no dull moment, really. Of course. No dull moment. And uh, uh, we'll prove that to you as we start our top training segment. Yes, it was about whether the Qatari uh, 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 government. government had, had asked our president to, not to come apply, to reapply country. or not. Um, well, our top training segment is up next. Of course, uh, we'll do that and then get to the papers uh, in a bit. Once again, you're welcome. Merci et Bopo. What is, what, no, what is the president doing trending. again? <laughs> but what the president is on the top trending again, yes, just is, like yes. he has today, yeah, yep. where, you know, we talked about he's being rejected or access to visa Doha, and uh, it will be rescheduled. But this time, it's not about that. It's actually on a positive note. Even though a lot of persons have not accepted that as very positive, the president uh, is scheduled to address the high-level general debate of the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly. And that's uh, scheduled for September 21st. So a lot's happening in September. Hmm. <laughs> right. And that, that, that is the, um, the UN General Assembly, I believe. Um, all right. Uh, we'll get to the one you've seen on your screen shortly, yes. So the UN General Assembly is, is coming up on the 21st of, of uh, Gen September in New York. Of course, it's, um, it's a highly anticipated yearly uh, event, you know, highly anticipated yearly event where presidents of the world gather uh, to discuss the important issues of the world. The influence of the UN is not as, 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 as it used to be, you know, it's a bit less, um, you know, felt, you know, even... If you want to look at recently as the days of Butras, Butras, Gali. But this is the United Nations um, General Assembly, not the Security Council, the General Assembly. Um, it's a normal thing, all right? There's a normal, normal thing, there's no big deal here. We hear that uh, a, a revised provisional list of speakers released from the Office of the General Assembly President uh, on Tuesday showed that President Buhari will be the first speaker on the second day of the gathering. The nations of the world who are member, member states of the United Nations, uh, have their leaders speak at the UN, even the ones who have sanctions on them. You know, <laughs> even the ones who are pariah, they will be allowed to attend the UN General Assembly. If, even if they have a travel ban, uh, they'll be allowed to go speak, you understand. The days of the military era, um, you know, I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, our leaders spoke. Uh, Maybe one or two didn't go to the UN General Assembly, but largely you have, I mean, look at uh, um, former uh, Cuban leader, uh, Fidel Castro, even with all the sanctions on Cuba, he always found his way to the UN General Assembly. Uh, Robert Mugabe, with all the sanctions on, on, um, on Zimbabwe then, you know, because of the, um, uh, the land, land farmers and uh, what do you call the land crisis, he still found his way. Uh, to 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 the UN General Assembly. And most times, uh, the place is, is sometimes, sometimes the place is empty because people will be sitting out for a long time. They have to go out. And a leader could be there for, for a while, you know, ranting about something that doesn't concern anyone, maybe about nuclear weapons or about no. socialism. And, you know, it's usually yeah, a but, talk but, show. But, but, but usually, so, if, um, if you look at it, I know that there's been several reactions following all of this. Uh, activities have been stated to uh, start from the 12th, uh, through, you know, that period, 12, up until you have 
13 to what have you till about you know 20 something 27 there about uh, this event would actually happen but like you have rightly mentioned you know it's no longer the same as it used to be uh, I don't know if it had also always been the same so if, if you follow the generation I mean the reactions that we're getting all of the balls on social media is that some people are saying why would the president I mean really what's he going to talk about who's inviting the president to talk about it you, you have mentioned those I mean presidents of countries they have been on the sanctions it's a normal over thing. time it's, yeah. it's a normal thing it's now normal. this is just, so some people have cited the mm -hmm. fact that the UN had recently made a comment on uh, the release of Namdi Kanu and you know why would the president be invited why would the UN invite but so, you so, need to know so this, that because, see, this is like displaying, because, displaying a gross um, and I mean no, it's no, understandable a but gross, I understand. gross lack of and it's understandable in a gross um, uh, ignorance of, of how things work you know the, yeah they, they, they don't understand how things work and you know, it's the same thing that seeps into the conversations online about the national polity, you know. Uh, for instance, okay, you're talking about uh, um, foreign remittances, or sorry, um, the diaspora donations for elections. So, is it right? There's nothing wrong with, I didn't know Nigerians. It's about black and white. What is on paper? You understand? You, you just know, you, sentiments don't win things. Don't, exactly. Don't win so, it, and that's it, why it's, it's interesting. Normal. There's nothing here. And that's why it's interesting to note it's that, just here. like you have mentioned, you know, if you, if you follow the trend, or I mean, if you understand black and white paper, what exactly are we talking about? The, the body, the United Nation, as, as a body, uh, you know, that existed shortly after, you know, the Civil War, and they came together to yeah, see the hey, World War. The World yeah. War, <laughs> trust me, I, yeah. I remember the Civil War because of Nigeria. But it's the World War we're talking about. Yes, I knew you were that was, I didn't know you were No, that I'm not. Old. No, no, no. <laughs> I never experienced a civil, civil war, uh, but my grandmother told me a couple right, of stories. Uh, right, so. um, the, the thing is, uh, the UN body, for those who are saying that the president should not, I mean, why would the president be invited and what have you? Nigeria became a member of the United Nations as soon as she became independent. I mean, 1960, October the 1st. So we became a member up until now. And it's just important that people come together. The purpose of the UN had been that uh, the issue of, you know, protecting uh, lives and property, you know, global security and prosperity, amongst other things, amongst other issues, uh, relations with other nations has been the focus of the United Nations. But I think that the conversation should be, uh, you know, moved towards whether or not the UN had lived up to her expectation, the reason that she was created. Uh, they always say she. <laughs> I don't know why we use a she to describe every other thing. No, right? no, we, so, we're not arguing about that. <laughs> we, we, no, we, I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> We, we, we won't I'm just saying it's a she. Made he, if yeah. he won't call it she, it's okay. No, but usually okay, it's okay. easy to say but, she. Yeah, it's, 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 she was it's created. interesting. Before we move on to the next, it's interesting, yes. Um, you know, press, people, it's, it's the, UN, the UN General Assembly is where leaders of even pariah nations, you know, nations who are even under sanctions go and they talk. You know, I, I, I remember, you know, over the years you see images of, Oh, some people dozing off <laughs> because <laughs> of some of the leaders who get onto some things people don't understand, you know. And you know, some of the leaders maybe I don't know what what's 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 people I don't know. If you get onto things people don't understand. You see some of the the uh, delegations dozing, falling asleep on their chair like this see, because the speech is going left right. You can't trace it. So all you have to do is probably use. I mean, of course, you'll put their uh, their the earpiece to get the interpreter interpretation of if it's in maybe Spanish. You know, so it's it's a, a a concoction of of different leaders. It's not just the president. You have a lot of them. You know, this is a seventy seventh session. Joe Biden will be there. But one thing about the General Assembly is that is uh, um, a platform where the every leader is is made equal. Every nation is made equal. It's not a Security Council. Uh -huh. Every leader is made equal, and every country will be represented. Have it. It's not a World Cup um, that the, the Super Eagles are missed out on. You know, so so. This is where every country becomes the same. Of course, that's, same, that, that, that's, so that's, that, that's the essence the, of it. As but long just as your president is your right, even the worst, if you don't like want the president to talk for you, he's the president of the country. You know, it's, this is not the most important. There are other salient issues. You know, um, no, but, but for me, there's, uh, there's nothing that will come out of this for me. I, I'm quite to, interested. To, it's it's I'm a total ops, and then the, the opportunity to fulfill a, a lifelong ambition, uh, and then just to be there. You know, but there's nothing you know that that comes out. The the meetings that hold behind the scenes are the of the general assembly. Those meetings, um, bilateral and multilateral meetings, I think are even more important than the speech. The speech for me is always an opportunity to show showcase yourself and just you know sell yourself and peace. But 
I think the meetings, so, so because saying, a lot of things are signed and uh, uh, decisions are reached, high level decisions are reached at General Assembly. Well, I, I, I would sure. say that that's uh, something, you know, to go with. But uh, if you look at the assembly, the gathering and the essence that you have, the UN as a body, uh, my question over time has been about why they exist. And that's a conversation for another time. But it's all encompassing. Because if you say that we come together for global peace and security and ensuring that that's, you know, friendly relations among other nations, helping others, it's like, you know, let's come together and ensure that everywhere is peaceful, the world is peaceful. We can't experience what we experienced before. We're talking about the First World War now. Uh, the after effect and the aftermath, and we're saying we need to correct all of the errors. But after now, um, you know, prior to that time, we've experienced, you know, different phases. And up until 2022, when a different dimension and dispensation, whether or not we're having, you know, uh, the conventional war or not, but our countries of the nation not experiencing war, uh, what is the UN? What's the essence of, you know, that gathering, really? Like but, I already well, mentioned, well, it's, it's a conversation for another yeah, day. Yeah, but, you know, but people, people would, I'm sure, would have a chill pill when they realize that, even uh, Vladimir Putin will be will be giving a speech. <laughs> no, yeah, nobody can stop but, him. But, but interesting, do you know that they're going yeah. to be talking about? Uh, will uh, come. There's a will bill he attend, and he will speak. In fact, even if if care is not taken, <laughs> yeah, Putin might speak after or before the Ukrainian president. So, um, uh, transforming so. transforming education summit is a bill. Mm -hmm. Uh, is billed as a major event at the session, and that's uh, really going to be a lot of focus. You're also going to have, according to the schedule, uh, where you have youths as well, uh, leading conversations as regard uh, the education. And a lot of persons are really interested, you know, in seeing what the president, his speech will be about at a time where you have uh, the educational sector on the lockdown and all that's going on in, in the system. Yeah, I, 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 I agree that, I mean, the, the content of the speech is important. Um, the, the presentation for the world to see, you know, Nigeria on the global stage is important. And but in terms of why is the president being invited, is where no, that, that, that's, where I, that's I not an issue. It, it, you know, it's not. <laughs> it's it, not you can't issue. stop him. He's the president. What, who is going to go and speak? Me or you? Who, who, you understand? <laughs> uh -huh. So anyway, l let's move on. The United Kingdom, of course, um, has a new prime minister. Liz Truss is a name former former foreign secretary um, under the administration or in the administration of um, Boris Johnson. Um, of course, the British um, they they, know, they know have how they do. And um, I think you would struggle, like, if you go down memory lane, to find a prime minister who um, made it through all his terms. Or they don't have terms, but you left, you know, on his own terms, you know, uh, at his own time or her own time. Uh, it's usually internal party, you know, wranglings, and uh, uh, the person is upstaged and has to step down. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not usually... Uh, we want to see something... You know, like you have in America, in the United States, where you do your time, you go. But of course, it's a parliamentary system based on uh, who wins the election, uh, the majority of the parliamentary vote. But you go back to the time of, uh, I mean, let's just, like I said last time, let's start from just recently, Margaret Thatcher. You know, it's been a scandal. You know, Thatcher tried, mercy, to stay for uh, some years, good number of years, and that's why she was called the Iron Lady. Um, Liz Truss is a new big British, British PM. And I think that she will also eat the same pill that has been dealt or drink from the same cup that has been fed the previous prime ministers. There will be a scandal. Something will come up. The members of the party are going to make noise. Is it okay? You go. And then she will resign and maybe she will give a heartbreaking speech and she will leave, you know. But she, she has been announcing the members of her cabinet. And um, you have Africans, some Africans who are there, in particular a Nigerian um, member of Parliament. She's a British, rather, with Nigerian heritage. Uh, so we can call a British Nigerian member of, or Nigerian British member of Parliament, Kemi Badenok, as uh, she's been announced as a member of uh, the cabinet. Um, Badenok was, you can see her, she was on the stage there. She was one of those vying for this position of. Um, uh, not prime minister, but of leader of the Conservative Party. Because when you become leader of the Conservative Party, you then automatically can become the prime minister because the Conservative Party is the majority in parliament. Um, so Kemi Badenoch was the was was she was in the campaign, and uh, there were some hopes that she would win. You know the 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 uh, Conservative Party or the Tory vote. 
you know but as time went on um it became clear that it was a two horse race uh and of course Liz Truss now came out as the winner of that uh, election she entered the house of commons as a member of parliament uh for saffron walden in 2017 she's been also outspoken on issues such as gender neutral toilets uh and uh, anti walk you know the conservatives who are those on the right now following Liz Truss's appointment so far uh, this will be the first time in UK history that the leading cabinet lieutenants of a British prime minister had no white occupying any of the great offices of state. Right, these are the great offices of state, treasury, foreign office, and uh, home affairs. I think the treasury, um, well, the chancellor of the exchequer happens to be uh, someone with Ghanaian heritage. That's great for Africa uh, and Africans. Um, uh, these are the three great offices, treasury, the Foreign Office and Home Affairs, and none of them um, are white, which is strange, uh, which is strange. So congratulations to um, Kemi Badenoch. She played her cards well, and she also did well, Mercy, by you know coming out as uh, uh, in the top five of the Conservative uh, Party in July that made her go on to the next round of this uh, 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 contest to become the leader of the conservative party no, and, and and i think that that's why you know you have the boards because it's a top trending and a lot of persons are reacting to uh the fact that she's been appointed uh, to this particular position so you would be sure that different reactions and different comments but uh, like she took to her twitter handle to i mean tweet verified twitter handle saying i'm delighted to start my new job and uh, looking forward to unleashing global British power, full potential so we can create more jobs, more growth, and more opportunities across the United Kingdom. Uh, it's going to be, I mean, it's really a time where there's a lot of work that needs to be done because of the economic situation right now in the United Kingdom. And we're talking about, you know, the cost of living amongst other issues. So, yes, she has a lot, uh, you know, on her plate. But, uh, you know, the boss and the reaction has been that, let's not forget that prior to this time, there's been several comments that's been made by, you know, Kemi Badnarok, and she talked about Nigerian politicians or, you know, the, the country being the place where uh, there's a lot of loot, looting going on. Uh, she left Nigeria, I, I think about 1996, if I'm not mistaken, and some people say, hey, it was a time where, you know, we talked about the Abacha loot and what have you. It has been it, and some people are saying it would never happen in our country. I mean, where you see young persons uh, getting to that position, you see a system where uh, we can't say 100% transparency, but to some extent, there's a, you know, a fair uh, playing ground, a level playing ground for everyone to come on board. And it's, it's quite impressive. We're proud. And uh, we say congratulations to her. I really don't know, but she's been very strong on some certain issues. And some people have also not really embraced that as, um, you know, a point because of some issues that she's been strong on. But it's a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing you, because, uh, for instance, you see the likes of Atiku Abubakar uh, sending a congratulatory message and also being excited. Usually when people are successful, you have others who are embracing and what have you. But it's good to see that, you know, whatever dreams that she has or have had over the years has been fulfilled in another part of the world. I hope that we get to that point where, you know, uh, other persons who have dreams... We, we, we get to that point really yeah she, she's quite quite young relatively young i mean born in 1980 uh her name uh olukemi uh badenok but of course she, before she got married she was uh known as uh ade goke ade goke uh born on the 2nd of january 1980 so she's she's quite young mm. i mean for 42 years old and uh, it's amazing you've you've given us um quite a, a a good at least a brief history of her and it, it just shows that um nigerians can make, can make it anywhere and um, this this isn't the first time we've have it we're having uh uh, uh nigerian. nigerian british you know british of nigerian origins having the spotlight um as far as british politics is concerned and then um, there was a time chuka muna it was um uh, he was an mp I don't know if you said an MP. He was um, touted as the next, as a, um, let me say, the, the British Obama. You know, yeah, Chikon Muna. And he had that, that uh, you know, outlook. Yeah, and I don't know what happened to his political career. It would have been uh, nice to see him uh, uh, become become prime minister. But um, uh, Kemi Badenok, um, 
uh, was born in London to Nigerian parents, uh, and she spent parts of her childhood in Lagos and the United States before returning to the UK at 16. And uh, after graduating from the University of Sussex, uh, she was a software engineer uh, before studying law at Birkbeck uh, University in London and later pursued a career in banking. Uh, we will not mention the names of the companies uh, for now, but she's done well. Uh, like you said, controversial um, because of her, her stance <laughs> on, on certain, certain issues. Yes, you know, anti work is one. You know, the Conservative Party is a is a rightist party. It's I mean, they're the 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 they are the Conservative Party. So this is what you expect if you're a member of the Conservative Party. You would have a Conservative. She, she, she's also strong it's, on the white privilege. I mean, yeah. uh, that's also another one where she's talked about where you know to her. Really, that should actually be faced out. And so you know what that would mean to the history. You know, she's saying that it's like you don't believe in a thing, and yeah. then why should that be here? It's, it's an ideology that should be faced out. Okay, so, uh, she, so she, she's saying that white privilege, the discussion about white privilege itself, she's not, uh, in, you know, think, she doesn't think it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. So these are sort of the conservative views, you know, anti-woke, you know, same-sex or neutral toilets. So, so you have male, you have female. They have a special toilet for those who f see themselves as gender neutral. <laughs> you know, if you are feeling, you uh, know, forms these days. Uh, some years ago, it was male and female. Now, it's no longer male and female. You can put non-binary. You can put X. You can but put, I, I you would know, still call you, you, you know. know. You know, so... Um, <laughs> it's difficult. So these are the issues. You know, these are the issues. Um, but we will move on. Congratulations to her. I mean, we won't have time to go into uh, all the details about her and uh, the history biography. But, but just but a quick a, one. one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so just a quick one because we're out of time. We're just delving into this one. Kofi, uh, the Kaduna train uh, terrorist negotiators have been arrested. And some people think that this is very commendable. But really, is this commendable? Because over time, a lot of persons have asked several questions. We see and we know we've heard of those who are actually having an encounter. Some people say we have negotiated. I was with this bandit. We went to XYZ places, including even on this platform. We've had several persons. I mean, a couple of them who've actually said, uh, you know, I met, I visited, we had an encounter. Really, if, if you have a contact with persons like this, I mean, you're negotiating with this terrorist. At the end of the day, because it's a conflict situation, if you talk about conflict situation, you should have a mediator. Uh, who, you know, appointed this person to become mediators, to negotiate with this terrorist. And when we think that if, because we're looking for their hideouts and where they are, how come we have not made a move? But um, Nigerians have reacted uh, quite differently on this particular one. Uh, his name is Tuko Mamu, the lead negotiator between terrorists and passengers kidnapped from Abuja Kaduna train on March the 28th. They've been arrested in Cairo, the capital of Egypt, with his family members. Uh, according to the report, he was arrested on the order of the Nigerian government. He was on his way to Saudi Arabia for the hijab and was detained at the Cairo International Airport 24 hours and it's been repatriated back to Nigeria. But others have also mentioned the likes of Sheikh, Sheikh Gumi. Uh, he is one person that, you know, has been on the forefront. He's talked about uh, the bandits or the terrorists and every other time, you know, there's several, he's negotiating, his meeting with them. Is speaking on their behalf, and others are asking, uh, are we having a double standard? These are questions. What is, it, is there a double standard? If we're arresting uh, Tuko Mamu, uh, how come we haven't arrested the likes of Sheikh Gumi? Well, well, well Tuko Mamu is, a, is an interesting character. Um, I mean, he's been... Um like you said, uh, I wouldn't use the word lead negotiator because that would, that would um, mean that there is a negotiating team officially. But he's been negotiating uh, a lot, you know, with the terrorists, uh, in particular the those who abducted uh, passengers on this uh, Kaduna-bound train and have held them for months now without release. And um, you would realize, I think, what people began to see. He's well known in the northern part of the country. He's a publisher of uh, the Desert Herald. And um, most times, you know, I mean, in recent times, rather, when you'd see that uh, uh, any of these kidnapped persons had been released by the terrorists, you'd see them taking a picture in an office with a banner at the back that has a camel. Now, that is the logo of the Desert Herald. And he became, uh, began to creep into national consciousness and awareness that, okay, this guy is doing something like this. And people began to take note. And he was the one who would, 
use his phone or maybe have a member of his staff use their phone to record uh, the statements of the the, the release victims, you know, and uh, kidnapped persons, and even maybe their family members, those who don't want to say anything. I mean, the recent, the gentleman who was shown in the video, the one who uh, was a lecturer, the one who was a doctor, the one who was a professor, the the family um, of four, you know, the, to the two kids or three kids, uh, the old woman, all these persons were in his office and they were taken, they were snapped, you know, pictures were taken and they made some statements. But the question that some had asked or have been asking is, okay, why don't we have these persons interviewed by the uh, state security services, the DSS, or some, um, you know, government security uh, agency? Why don't we have these persons taken in so that the details they have can help uh, track and locate the, the terrorists? Because I, I don't know if the authorities have told us they know where the terrorists are. That statement has not officially been made, as far as I know. The last time President Muhammad Buhari spoke about this, he met with the families of the victims after the last release, and he said they're doing everything to ensure that they're released. Um, all is not, doesn't add up as far as this story is concerned. Let me do my hands like this. A lot does not add up as far as this story is concerned. And it's, it's just um, repugnant to a lot of people. Uh, it's repugnant because, till now, the government has not made any effort to release these kidnapped persons until now we have no official statement from government on the whereabouts of these kidnapped persons and what we hear from the president is that they've had um suggestions as to how to get them released but you know they don't want to take any rushed action or any uh, uh action that would would um compromise the life uh, of these uh, kidnapped persons and would lead to collateral damage they don't want to have that you know but so what else is the government doing the president informed us that in that last meeting with the family members that oh they had an agreement with the terrorists he said okay please he said give us our family members our wives and children who are in your custody and we will release the uh, uh, our victims and get our hostages guess guess what the president said the federal government of nigeria flew chartered a plane to go carry the uh, pick up the family members of these terrorists from the prisons where they were to go give them they chartered the plane and it took them to the uh, to the terrorists did, did uh, you know fulfill their side of the agreement the terrorists refused to release the hostages so they played a fast one on the government and did something like this <laughs> and then the government came to tell us came to tell us tell us that oh the terrorists played a fast one and also you know so who is who is who is the no, government you know so, so people have been saying mercy that um you know maybe even mamu and and Gumi, because mamu is gumi's spokesman and gumi had been the one negotiating so is gumi not part of this you know so, so we listen, need to move questions away because we're out asking. Of time. what we're seeing is that the more you look, the less you, you see. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll wait to see what happens. This man was in the country. All this while, he wasn't arrested. He entered the plane, went to Saudi Arabia for lesser hatch, and then he was arrested. And brought, why the drama? Coffee, you we, know, we, we need to move away. We're out know, of time we have to go. We have to come back. But we, we'll be back um, after this break with a look at uh, the stories on the front pages of the papers and national dailies this morning.